Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of D BASD District Insider, a half hour to uncovering the great things about the Bethlehem Area School District. My name is Viveka Dury, a student from Liberty High School. First, we're gonna take a behind the scenes look at BASD Minithon, take a look at the Cops and Kids Celebration Rebreeding event, and so much more. And so much more. But first, let's take a look at uh, one of our great elementary schools, Miller Heights. Miller Heights has been in serving our community and our children for many years. Our staff is like a family. Our principal, teachers, secretary, nurses, uh, our guidance counselor, our custodians, and our childcare. We're all a big family and work together to ensure that our children are successful and prepared for middle school. I, I think the building and the students, the, the word family comes to mind. Um, the families here at Miller Heights are awesome and all the kids come from great families. Uh, and it comes to our staff as well, it's a big family. And so the kids get welcomed in here and they feel like they're a part of the family. Uh, and they do an excellent job of, you know, treating their classmates like they're part of the family and the staff is part of the family. And I think family is a really good word for, for our kids here at Miller Heights. What I tell people mostly at the end of the day is that this place runs like a perfectly well-oiled machine. Um, I believe that it starts at the top with our principal and trickles down to the 50 plus staff members here at the school because it is a team. The other thing that really stands out to me that I take away at the end of the day is there is this um, sense of equality among students here. For the 400 plus, how many students we have? 400 and something students here. As the PTO president, um, we have a very um, active PTO. We support a lot of programs within the school. We support um, all the field trips for all the grades. Um, we do all the fundraising for the school. We have our annual Husky hike. Um, we do lots of fun things with the students. We have our bingo night. We have our fall fest. We do the holiday parties for Halloween. And I think it's just a great active PTO that supports the teachers and the staff here at Miller Heights. From the time that uh, my son here, my oldest, uh, started in kindergarten, I mean, the whole school has always felt like a really tight community, a family, and you know, parents are always so involved. Um, the teachers are wonderful. The administration is wonderful. By I always tell everybody, by the end of you know the first month of school, Mrs. Roder knows every 400 something of these kids by name and says hi to them in the hallways, and you know that you can tell that the, the staff, the administration, the faculty, they love our students just as much as the parents love their own kids. And you know, we've just had an, a wonderful experience here at Miller Heights. Miller Heights is a very special place. Our students are great leaders and great friends to each other. They work hard every day. Our faculty, staff, and families all work together to create a wonderful learning environment. Our students learn and grow and make many happy memories. We are Just another gem of the school we have right here in the BASD. On April 27th, it was a very special day where students from both Liberty and Freedom band together in the fight against pediatric cancer on the 12, in a 12 hour event called BASD Minithon. So for those that don't know about BASD Minithon, um, so it basically all started from Penn State and they hosted their first annual thon like multiple years ago. Um, they get up to like $10 million a year and we basically raise money for children with pediatric cancer. And it's out of the Four Diamonds Fund, out of Penn State, and it became such an amazing thing that other high schools started branching off and making mini thons. So there's about 200 other schools um, in the United States, mostly around the East Coast area and Pennsylvania area that participate in this. And what we decided to do is make it a Bethlehem area school district mini thon. So Freedom and Liberty, we come together and we have a 12 hour dance marathon from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and we dance all day. We have different games, activities, themed hours. We serve them lunch and dinner. Um, and we have a big reveal at the end. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we do. It's an unexplainable feeling. Everybody's 
so nervous and maybe they don't want to be involved or anything, but when everyone's here tomorrow and there's 800 to 1,000 kids standing on this floor dancing and having a good time, and then when family hour comes and everyone's crying and thinking about like the, the kids that we've lost, everyone really comes together. And I know we always say like the liberty, the rivalry between freedom and liberty, but we really do come together and it, everyone is super supportive and helpful and it's a great day. I remember my freshman year, um, it was at Freedom and it was so fun. Like you walk in and there's posters, there's, you can see behind me, there's balloons, like there's everything. And it's just like a very colorful and like fun environment. And it's so cool. And then throughout the day, there's like snow cone machines, cotton candy, um, puppies come, like therapy puppies. And then there's a glow hour. So the last hour, the gym goes dark and there's glow sticks. And it's just like such a fun day. And although it's 12 hours, like it goes by so fast. And now he's cash free. Oh. <laughs> I'm definitely going to miss the people. I've made some of my best friends. Lena is one of my best friends because of this. Um, and I'm definitely going to miss like the little things like this. So when like the balloons came out today, like I got all excited because I was so excited for tomorrow and just thinking about the reveal and um, all of our hard work coming together. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see it all come together. For the Mayor School District Mini Thon 2019 is fun time and for a good cause no less. Up next on our show, we take a trip to South Bethlehem for an annual event that started out as a small celebration but is now reaching a huge milestone. The Cops and Kids celebration of reading, and that's how it began. Um, was 13 years ago, and I think we had given out 50,000 books. And we thought that was just magnificent. And so the mayor said to me, let's have a celebration. And so we really didn't know what to expect, and we truly expected hundreds of people, possibly 500 at the top end, and we had thousands. And I realized it was something very special to the community. It is a day to celebrate who we are as a community, and all the people who have helped to make Cops and Kids what it is. You understand when you start a program like this, you have no idea where it's headed. And people often say, what was your goal? I had no goal. But the people of the Lehigh Valley and the people in Pennsylvania, are, are Bethlehem rather, of all ages, all ages, young people through city, senior citizens decided this matters. And it does matter. And it's our day to celebrate the fact that the community has come together for the children. Uh, this year is very special. It is now the celebration of reading and the arts and sciences because we celebrate all that's happening in our community and what a lovely thing it is. But it is our march to the millionth. Can you imagine? We are about to give out our millionth free book. That only happens when a community comes together. No one person does that. A community has done that. <laughs> We have a lovely beginning of this year's parade to make it even more special. We always have an opening parade down the Greenway. This year, in honor of all of the young people who have benefited from the pro program or who have provided books for the program, all 16 elementary schools in the Bethlehem Area School District will be represented in an opening parade with the Liberty High First Company and the Brockle Middle School Band and the police horses uh, this is a wonderful set off and truly reflects who we are as a program. Cops and Kids, although it's about literacy, it is about community. And what a lovely thing to show the community that all of these young children have really benefited by giving or receiving books. We could not do this without the cooperation of the Bethlehem Area School District. I love that the children not only have received thousands of books, but have provided thousands of, thousands of books to give to other children in other districts. It makes a statement about who we are. 
I am very proud of the fact that Bethlehem and the Bethlehem Area School District has embraced this and understands the value, not only to the community, but to the entire Lehigh Valley. Um, that's so important to me, having been a product of the Bethlehem Area School District. I love the district. I love what it did for me and for my brothers. And to know that it now, in fact, extends that all these years later. I felt that kindness when I was a young person and I'm witnessing that kindness again as an old person. And what a pleasurable thing that is for me. Um, I often say sometimes when you're little, you think of your community as Disneyland and it's magnificent. I love as an adult that I see this community as Disneyland. It's a place of kindness. It's a place of compassion. It's a, it's a place where we, we share what we have with others. So the Bethlehem Area School District children and teachers and administrators have all embraced us and made this a better community. I think what we're witnessing is very important to see all of these schools working together to honor the children, not only of Bethlehem, but of the entire Lehigh Valley. Up next on this show, some people say that there's something in the water in the BASD. And you might say the same thing too after this video. So let's send things to our report, our youngest reporter, Violet. Hi, I'm Violet, a third grader at Lincoln Elementary School in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I have questions, people have answers. This is the gray area with Violet. When you walk the halls of Liberty or Freedom High School, you might think you're seeing double. It's a senior class with many multiples. Seven pairs of senior twins at Liberty and an astonishing 12 at Freedom. With so many twins graduating, it's a senior class unlike any of the others. Did you know there are this many twins graduating? I no, no, no. I, I mean, sometimes I like to like add, like be like, oh yeah, they're twins, but then like looking at everyone here now, it's like weird. Three percent of the people in the U.S. are twins, and although being twins is uncommon for most of us, for some of them, it's uncommon if you're not. Well, twins actually run in our family, so I have twin aunts and then twin cousins that are both boys, so. We're both, we're all actually really close, so we have a close-knit family. Of course, after many of them have been together since kindergarten, you can imagine they're pretty close. I mean, to be honest, I'm a little close than I want to be right now. But we're, we're very close, no, you know. No, we're close, we're close. We live together, so we're very close. How close are you? Uh, depends on the day. If he needs money, we're pretty close. If not, then the day. Several admit that there are some benefits to having something most others don't. Always having like someone there, I mean like for like support. Yeah, support I guess. Yeah, yeah. and also just saying that your twin's pretty cool too, because not a lot of people can say that. <laughs> like, if older or younger siblings, sometimes they don't get to have in, as many things in common because they're not going through the same things at the same time. But we always get to relate because we're both in the same grade and we take the same classes, so conversation never runs dry. We always have something to talk about. And you always have somebody to like go to social events with, so if we have to go to a party or something, you're never like short of a friend. And hey, they don't always agree 100%. Who's older by how much? I'm older by five minutes. It's actually four, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> it really is for. And what's it going to be like next year when they go in different directions? Because like we spend every waking moment together, so like it's gonna be weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna suck. I don't know how I'm gonna sleep at night. Yeah, I might actually like spend like the first week in my dorm like crying myself to sleep because like we share a bed yeah. and everything. So it's like my sister's gone and like in bed crying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Some are willing to embrace the unknown. What's it going to be like not being together? It'll be weird because we've spent obviously the majority of our lives together, but uh, it'll be a new experience that I might enjoy a lot. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> a little different and like a big life change for me, but I think I'll get used to it. Half of me's gonna miss him, half of me's gonna be like, it's gonna be heaven. What is it going to be like not being together? I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm actually, I don't know, I'll be like, I think it'll be okay, I think it'll be good to know different people, but um, I think it'll be sad. I think it'll make us closer though. 
Others see the future with their twin a very lucrative opportunity. We have like we have a, we have a dream. You should be telling the dream. All right, we'll tell them the dream. All right. So uh, Joe and I want to own our own business uh, one day, and like it'll be like Alvarado Industries, and. Uh, I'll be the CEO, he'll be the CFO, and we're just gonna like run it all, and we're gonna make millions. Yeah. All over Bethlehem, it looks like there's going to be double the cause for celebration this graduation season. For the gray area, this is Violet signing off. Thanks, Violet. Next on our show, let's take a few moments at Governor Wolf Elementary, where they celebrated Arts Day in late April. Whether you've moved here yesterday or have been a lifelong resident, the BASD is home to all walks of life. So let's take a look at this edition of Built by Bethlehem. Well, I grew up in Bethlehem. I, starting from kindergarten, uh, went to Edgeboro Elementary School way back when the Ed Center was an elementary school. That's where I started. From there, I went to uh, Northeast, which was junior high back then and then I went on to Liberty High School. Well, I just remember in high school that um, there was almost a black cloud hanging over Bethlehem because it was impossible not to know someone who didn't have a father who was laid off by Bethlehem Steel. It was just that time um, the industry was crumbling and um, so that ephemeral black cloud that was hanging over was just really dampening um, the morale. And I just remember that this, this distinct feeling um, coming out from all my teachers that it's, it's up to us to do something about this. It's, it's going to be us, um, our task to permeate this, this depressing environment all around us. And I just remember all my teachers um, and all these initiatives going on in the school district stepping up. It was just, it was this, all the plays we do, all the sporting events that we were kind, it was on our shoulders to kind of save the city, so to speak. And that's what we did. It was, there was a sense that the school district was the, at the center of the morale of the city. And, and it was amazing uh, how that happened. You, you saw it in, there were a lot of kids that were depressed because they were coming to school with the, the worries and the troubles of their parents on their shoulders but you also saw it in the way the kids rallied around each other and bonded with each other and encouraged each other to get involved in things going on in the school. Because frankly, 
everything else outside of the school was depressing. So um, it was just an amazing time that I think that's where the school district really became important to the survival of the city, to, uh, certainly to the survival of the morale of the city. I'm Betsy Kreidler and I'm Built by Bethlehem. As the show winds down, let's take a look at some of the student-created work right here from the BASD. Hi, I'm Eliana. Hi, I'm Juan. Hi, I'm Tessa. Hi, I'm Brady. Hi, I'm Isabella. Hi, I'm Alex. Hi, I'm Audrey. Hi, I'm Natalie. Hi, I'm Jordan. We're in kindergarten. We're in kindergarten. In kindergarten dancing. We're in kindergarten. We are in kindergarten. Come baby! We're in kindergarten. We're in kindergarten. Superman! We're in kindergarten. We are in kindergarten. I like kindergarten at TJ because I get to be a reader. I like kindergarten at TJ because I like to color. I love kindergarten because I get to be a writer. I love kindergarten because I get to play at TJ. I love kindergarten at TJ because I'm getting ready for first grade. I love TJ because I get to learn sign language. I love kindergarten because I can be a speller. I love TJ because I get to be a reader. On March 14th, six students that were chosen from a pool of BASD elementary schoolers competed in a future chef competition organized by Sodexo, the Bethlehem Area School District's food management service. The students were given a short presentation about kitchen safety and a tour of the Northeast Middle School kitchen. Then it was time to get to work. Each student was given just over an hour to complete a recipe of their choice with the help of an adult chef. The students got the chance to present their meal to a table of judges. After enjoying all the delicious food, it was time for the judges to make the difficult decision of choosing a winner. Ferris from the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs was even on hand to join in the fun and help award the top three chefs. In third place was Chef T.C. Smill with her recipe for Spanish rice pockets. In second place was Chef Siana Cologne with her own recipe that she named Siana's Silly Stuffed Sweet Potatoes. The winner of the 2019 Future Chef competition was Ibrahim Alik with his recipe for healthy steak tacos.
well. Sunny. Cloudy. Rain. Snow. Windy. Foggy. Human. Icy. Stormy. Thunder. Tornado. Hurricane. Winter. Spring. Gammon. For this Project Lead the Way presentation, I will be using Vernier Equipment and Logger Pro to collect the data from an electrocardiogram. First, I'm going to start by having my patient sit in an upright position with her feet flat on the ground and arms extended on the table. Next, I will connect the red lead to the inside of her left elbow, connect the black lead to the inside of her right wrist, and connect the green lead to the inside of her right elbow. Now that the equipment is all properly set up, I'm going to press a small green button and start collecting data. Due to the fact that this is high school machinery, the results are not always accurate and never should be professionally used to diagnose or treat illnesses. However, in this run, you can clearly see the waveforms found on EKGs called the PQRST wave. This is a professional EKG of a healthy individual where you can clearly identify the PQRST waves. The P wave is the first short upward movement of the EKG tracing. It indicates that the atria are contracting, pumping blood into the ventricles. The QRS complex, normally beginning with a downward deflection, Q, a larger... I'm afraid that's all the time we have for BASD District Insider. You can check out our local BASD TV news channel on your, on your local cable outlet for all things BASD. My name is Viveka Dury. Thanks for watching.